Well, we've run into some serious problems over here. When we started this, it was blue. Okay, this thing was blue. And the blue paint that's on top of this, the blue paint that's under all this primer, is lacquer. It's spray can paint. And this is why I stress all the time, don't ever use paint out of a spray can to paint something like this because you are wasting your time. Um, what's happening is anything that I put on this, uh, it's reacting. The lacquer spray can paint is reacting all around the edges of the, uh, the blue paint. And if you look right there, you can see, I hope, I think I busted it out. But what's happening is my primer, whether I use reducer it or not, it's reacting around the edges of the blue paint. The only thing I can do, and if this doesn't work, I'm not painting this thing. I can tell you right now, I will not paint this. I am not going to be liable for the paint peeling off in two or three months. But the only other thing I can do is I will have to put some more of that polyester primer over this. So we are basically back to square one where we started. And it just didn't happen on this side only, it, hap uh, it happened on the other side as well. Uh, same exact thing, same exact spot. Uh, it went all the way down this groove here. And usually when this happens and paint starts blistering, once you bust through it, it just starts blistering and blistering. Uh, there's no way to fix it but to strip it down and I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that. I will give this back to him and say, here you go, take it somewhere else and have a great day. I'm just letting you know right now that I am not going to spend uh, three weeks of prepping uh, a fiberglass piece that you can buy for a couple hundred dollars. Okay, this thing probably costs $250, $300 brand new. Go buy another one, throw this in the trash, and then if you want me to paint it, bring it back and I'll do that. But as far as this thing goes, all right, if this doesn't fix this problem, all right, I'm done with it. I'm not doing any more. I'm sorry. It's over. You can only do so much until you finally say, it's not going to work. Unless I strip everything off of it and fuck that, it ain't fucking happening over here. Well, it looks like we uh, beat the race here. We're still in the driver's seat on this uh, project and we're still the winner. Um, I went ahead and reprimed all this spot. And I eliminated all of that crap that was going on. I reprimed it, block sanded it out, and it looks like it's ready for paint. Uh, we got this sanded down to 600 wet. I started out with 400, then I went to 600. And now what we're going to do to ensure a nice clean surface after I washed it, I washed this off uh, with soapy water outside and then rinsed it off. We're going to go ahead and wipe this whole thing down with wax and grease remover. Now, it's really not necessary if you wash it down with soapy water, but I want to make sure, and I always do this anyway, it's just good practice. You can see what's going on here, all right, to get all of the muck and dirt off of it 100%. We can actually go over this with a tack rag if you want to use tack rags. I don't normally use tack rags. Uh, so as you can see, just from what you've watched, fiberglass is a tricky game. And if you don't know what you're doing, you better stay away from it. But, if you do want to tackle something like this, don't give up. You saw that I almost gave up on this. I actually texted the owner pictures and I said, I'm going to prime it one more time. If it doesn't work, we aren't painting it. Now, we're not even to the painting stage yet. We're only to the epoxy prime stage. i got to put a coat of epoxy primer on here. And when I put the primer on here, um, I'm actually going to only use the hardener in the epoxy primer. I'm not going to use uh, any reducer. 
Now, one more thing about this job that I'm going to let you know is I'm not buffing it. Uh, this is a particular job that the fiberglass is so thin on these things that to color sand and buff this uh, would take a long time. So we really need to make sure that our paint booth is clean. You can see I've already cleaned it out. I put water on the floor. And now we've got to go ahead and get our epoxy primer on that. Okay, we got everything cleaned off. Now, I want to let everybody else also know this is Sunday night, uh, 7 o'clock, Sunday night in the middle of the summer, so it's pretty hot out. But uh, I got to get this thing painted, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint it tonight. So, what we got here, we got our shop line uh, product, and this is an epoxy primer. This is a sealer. Whenever you hear the word epoxy, it is a sealer, it is not a primer. Now you can dust the epoxy primer uh, where it will dust over, you know, on a light sand, but you cannot block sand this like you would a uh, 2K primer or sandable primer. Remember that. This is a sealer that will seal everything in so it won't blister back and it won't peel and it won't have any reactions. But the only way to do that is you can only use the hardener with this, period. So we're going to go ahead and mix up enough to put one full wet coat, and that's all you need. Um, I actually have a bumper cover in there that goes to a Mercedes-Benz that's black. I'm going to go ahead and paint that at the same time. And we need to put sealer on that as well. So we're going to go ahead and mix this up. And once again, all we're going to use with our epoxy primer on this particular item is the hardener only. Okay? You see that word? Hardener. Anytime that you see a product that says hardener, that means that it's a non-sandable item. And then we're going to let that sit for approximately 10 to 15 minutes so it will react. You know what I'm saying? So it'll all mix up and we're making sure that it's 100% mixed. You always want to let your epoxy primer sit and then once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and apply my coat of epoxy primer and then we're going to go straight into the black paint and then once I put the black paint on there we're going to come back and I'm going to show you the quick way to clear this to make it where it's a super high gloss clear and you shouldn't have to color sand and buff it. So let me get this epoxy primer on there. I'm going to put the base coat on and then when I come back to apply the clear I'm going to show you how to mix that where it will be a super duper high gloss finish that we shouldn't have to color sand and buff. And one more tech tip I want to show you, um, and I'm actually going to do an extensive video on this product, is you always want to have a filter on your spray gun going into the spray gun from the air. Even if you got a filter pack on your air, always have a filter, okay, a portable filter on the end of your spray gun. That's double, triple protection. That's going to save your ass in the end. And if you're getting fisheye in your paint jobs, not having one of these is probably why. Okay, I'm going to head up into the paint booth. Let's go in there and get a gander at that epoxy job that I just did. And I want to show you that when you apply your epoxy to something at this extreme, you don't want to put a very thick coat on. You just want to put a coverage coat and that's all. So if we look right here you can see how silky smooth it came out by sanding it down to 600 and all I did I put a quick coverage coat that's it. If you put a very thick coat wet coat on there you're gonna have a chance of blistering up and we don't want that that's very important. And then of course you can see that the fender is epoxy primed and what gives it that nice silky smooth feeling and look for our paint to lay down is going to be the prep job that we did to our items by wet sanding it only and getting it down to that 600 grit so it will be a nice sheen 
and everything will lay down with hopefully, hopefully, no orange peel. Well, let me go ahead and get my black on there. We'll go ahead and look at that. Um, I'm not showing you how to spray the paint on this time. It's basically a one, two, three step how to repair this stuff and do it right. So far, I hope you're following me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you're a subscriber, hit that little bell down there next to the subscribe button. And if you're not a subscriber, please support me and subscribe to this channel. Uh, that's the only support that I ask, besides possibly maybe buying a t-shirt right above that first comment in the merchandise section. Alright, I went ahead and applied my uh, base coat paint. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mix my clear up to where I shouldn't have to buff it. And this is how you're going to do it. We're going to go ahead and take, this is base coat paint. So, it does have a little bit of reducer in it, but that's okay. Reducer is not going to hurt it. You can mix up base coat paint with reducer and it'll stay good for 10 years if you keep it in the right temperature. No longer than that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my base coat paint, I'm going to pour it back in the paint that I didn't use, I'm going to pour it back into the can. I'm going to go ahead and cover that up. So can use it on other jobs, need be. And then what I'll do is I'm going to take my cup with the paint residue in it and I'm going to go ahead and mix my clear up with the residue, the black paint residue inside it. Now what this is doing, it's not just adding the color of black to it, it's also adding the residue of the reducer mixed with the paint. So we're going to go ahead and mix a whole quart up. And you see I'm using a strainer. Very important. And by adding that residue into my mix, it's going to make that flow out where we shouldn't have any orange peel and possibly minimal, minimal orange peel at the most. Then we'll take our hardener. We're going to go ahead and use our strainer as with that as well. And then now what I've done is I've mixed up my clear, get a clean stick, and then we'll go ahead and mix that up. And if you look real close, let me show you what we got here. You can see on that stick that it's tinted with a black tint, which is giving us a semi-black single stage clear. So I'll go ahead and take my custom mix of my clear that I just made to show you. And then I'll go ahead and put two coats on it. And it should come out awesome. I might go with three coats, but possibly two should cover it. This is a medium solid clear we're using here. I don't believe in high solids. High solids go on like a rock. They're hard to buff. They're hard to deal with. Keep your high solids sticking up, but I'm not a professional guy. One more thing you could possibly do if you really want top-notch finish is you can go ahead and put two coats of this on. Now this is a 50-50 mix with reducer. This is an inner coat color blender. By applying two coats of this to your paint, you come back the next day and then you wet sand that with 400, or no, I'm sorry, with 1500, not 400. You would wet sand that with 15, 1500 and then apply your clear and you're guaranteed you don't have to color sand and buff. Guaranteed. So, that's just a couple more tech tips from the guy that doesn't know fiberglass from shit glass, shit toilet paper, or whatever. Fiberglass man wants to say a couple words, if that's okay with you. Oh, oh, oh how you doing there? This is fiberglass man. My friend Pete's right. My friend Pete's right. Fiberglass is very, very hard to deal with. It's a very hard situation. But we're going to make it work because fiberglass man says, hell yes, you can do it. Even if 
my friend Pete isn't a professional. He's doing it, and you can do it too, because you're not a professional, you bastard. So do it right, do it right, and let Fiberglass Man tell you that you are going to do it right by watching this video. I got to go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> ah. Ooh, Fiberglass Man to the rescue. All right, now that Fiberglass Man laid it down to you, let's go in the paint booth just real quick. Like, we're going to look at our base coat, see how it laid down, and then I'm going to go ahead and apply my clear. So, you can see right here, it laid down really smooth, really nice. Um, it's got a good sheen to it. It's a little bit dry in places, but I think it's going to be okay. I literally put the paint on a little bit dry in some areas, and another thing, it's really hot out. So, by the time I painted this and I went around the other side, this side was already dry, so it's got some overspray which will be fine. Get her done, do it right, do it right, do it right. Because if you're not doing it right, you're gonna end up not doing it at all. My friend Pete doesn't like that. Don't let my friend Pete down and be a shyster. Don't let my friend Pete down and show me that you can do it because I know you can, bitch! three we got three full wet coats of clear on it now remember I left the residue of the paint in the clear let's go check it out let's see what we got and I think this video set will actually be over and there you go right there and that is how you take an old piece of fiberglass and restore it this is Pete my friend Pete your friend Pete not claiming to be a fiberglass professional, but hopefully knowing what I'm doing. Black is a very hard color to paint. Um, by adding the clear with the residue of the paint, gave us an awesome high gloss finish that will probably not need color sanded. On a particular piece like this, you really don't want to color sand and buff it anyway. The heat from the uh, buffer will actually create problems, so it's best to just leave it like it is and go down the road. So if you have an old piece of fiberglass or something of the sort and you're looking to restore it, I hope this video set helped you out. And I hope you learned a lot. Uh, restoring old fiberglass is a very, very tricky job, especially if it's been painted several times, like this thing was. And most people that own this type of stuff, they usually use spray can paint or just cheap, inexpensive paint to paint it with. So, I hope the guy likes it. I know he's going to like it. And it's time to say goodbye to Hasta La Vista. And I'm going to ask you one more time, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, subscribe. Next to the subscribe button is a little bell. Hit that bell and we'll notify you every time I upload a brand new video. I'm here to help you. I'm here to get you off your ass. I'm here to give you confidence to do something, all right? To do something. Let's just end it right there. It's Sunday night, 10 o'clock, and I am closing the shop down and going home. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.